So let's start by looking at the waveform outputs. As we know, there are two oscillators. There are three different waveform outputs for each oscillator A as well as oscillator B. Let's look at oscillator A. So I've plugged the sign out jack here to my main output and I have the bit CV from my Keith McMillan Q Nexus going into the one volt per octave jack here. So now when I play on the keyboard, we can hear the sine wave. So this large knob here is the pitch control for oscillator A. There's also a fine tune control just below. Now I'm playing a C, but we're not hearing a C. So let's tune this. I'll try to get it to C approximately with the big dial and use the fine tune control to get it closer. Now in the Eurorack domain, pitch tracking is always an issue, especially with West Coast style modules like this one. The C is in tune. And as we get lower, it still looks okay. Let's go higher. Now here the C is a bit sharp, but this is still very much acceptable. Sometimes it's a lot worse than this. That higher C is a lot more out of tune as you can see. Problems like this can always arise in the Eurorack world. So you have to either accept it or get into the habit of constantly tuning the oscillator. Leaving the modules running for a while sometimes helps too. Okay, let's check out the next waveform output. I'll connect to the triangle jack. Now that triangle doesn't look exactly like a triangle. Let me tune this an octave lower. As you can see, it looks more like a rounded triangle. If we compare that with the sign, it's almost the same. So this is not a pure sign output. In fact, the triangle sounds a bit duller than the sign. Strange, but that's what it is and it's good to be aware of that. Okay, let's move on and check out the sawtooth out. That's definitely buzzy, like a sawtooth. But in the oscilloscope, you can see it's a bit strange looking. There seems to be a subtle breakpoint during the ramp down stage of the saw. But it does sound very much like a saw, so you can leave it at that. Okay, so those were the three waveforms we get on oscillator A. Now let's check out oscillator B's waveforms. This too has a sign. I'll change the pitch CV signal to go to the 1 volt per octave input for oscillator B. This sign too is similar to oscillator A, where it's got a bit of harmonic content, so not a pure sign. It's slightly out of tune, so I'll fix that with the fine tune control. Now check this out. The octave above is way out of tune. Now you can calibrate the oscillator tuning by using a flathead screwdriver here and rotating anti-clockwise to tune up. Let's get this to C. That looks good. But the problem is that the lower octave is now too sharp. It's almost a C sharp. So like I mentioned earlier, tuning can be a big hassle in this world. So you have to live with it or get digital modules like the expert sleepers ones that will calibrate with your DAW and have everything perfectly in tune. Okay, let's check out the next waveform out, which is the square out. Let's hear this an octave lower. Nice deep hollow sound as you would expect from a square shape. Alright, in the next tutorial, we will check out the final output which has some really interesting controls.